going up and back at Spartan Stadium and Grundy Center tonight as we are set to kick off number three, North Tama, visiting the fifth-ranked Spartans of Grundy Center. Last week, Logan Canucks 88-yard kickoff return for touchdown set the tone as Grundy Center celebrated homecoming by rolling to a 55-0 win over Green Mountain Garwin. The Spartans scored often in their blowout victory, which included a uh, first quarter 29-yard interception return for touchdown by Dane Zenkulup. Grundy Center picked off five passes last week while limiting the Wolverines to 176 yards of offense. North Tame had lost two fumbles in the red zone last week, but still produced its second highest point total of the season in a 27-6 uh, victory at East Buchanan. Noel Weber led the Red Hawks attack, rushing for 104 yards and four touchdowns on 20 carries. Tyler Staker completed six of 13 passes for 170 for 107 yards while distributing the ball to four different receivers last week. So with that, let's give you the starting lineups for tonight's game. First of all, for the Spartans at Grundy Center, quarterback Logan Canock, 5'11", 180-pound sophomore. At halfback is Zach Opheim. The wide receivers are Nick Asher, Matt Jensen, Cale Hendricks, and Jensen Clapp. And across the front line, left to right, it is Austin Hildebreidel, along with Austin Engelkiss, Braden Sawyer, Colby Muller, and Wes Willis. Grundy Center averaging 348 yards of offense this season. North Tama defensively will counter with a 4-4 defense. It'll be uh, ends that will be Adam Griner and Ryan McLean. James Hill and Dylan Hosek are the tackles. The linebackers include Corey Eisenhower along with Zach Griner, Luke Pennell and uh, Noah Weber. The corners are Tate Payne and uh, Ashton Bradley along with Gabe Cabriva at the free safety spot. Offensively, North Tama will again will start Gabe Cabriva the sophomore. His first career start tonight in place of Skyler Stacker, who was ejected last week, not available tonight. Noah Weber is at running back. Luke Pedal and uh, Tate Payne are the two receivers, along with Austin Ashton Bradley and Austin Griner. Zach Griner moves from the tailback spot to the right tackle position, but could run tonight if needed to be. The other offensive line players are Zach Griner, Dylan Hosack, along with Eisenhower and Hill. Grundy Center will count it with a 4-4 defensive attack. That'll be Hiddlebrittle and uh, Asher at the ends. Tackles are Willis and Muller. The linebackers outside are Jensen Clapp, Logan Kanak. Inside are Jesse Mackey and Zach Opheim. The corners are uh, Adam Hoy, along with Kale Henrys. The free safety is Dane Sankula. Grundy Center allowing 182 yards of offense. Meanwhile, the Red Hawks defensively allow 191 yards of offense and uh, average 261 yards of total offense. Grundy Center gets the football first and is kicked off and fielded there by the Spartans. The return man gets it near the 30-yard line, and Adam Hoy returns it inside the 35 to about the 40-yard line, and that is where Grundy Center will start the first drive of the night. First down of 10 here for the Spartans. So Grundy Center with the football first, dressed in their home maroon uniforms, white lettering numerals, stripes on the street, white insignia on the helmet. Going right to left here in this opening half, North Tama in their red, white uniforms with the red numerals outlined in black, red insignia on the helmet also outlined in black. It's Logan Canock, the quarterback. Man flanked to his uh, near side. Here's the handoff now. That'll be uh, a handoff to uh, the tailback, Zach Opheim. He's got a short gain to about the 45-yard line, so it's a five-yard pickup in the first carry tonight by Zach Opheim. That'll bring up second down and five. Opheim this year carrying the football. He's got 99 yards, 680 yards. So that was the 100th carry of uh, the season for Opheim on the opening possession of the game. They'll send twin receivers to the near side, twins to the right side here. And again, it's Canuck in the gun. Man to his right. He'll roll it out to pass. Look downfield, throws it at midfield. It's caught for the first down, but a flag down in the backfield. On the receiving end of the pass is Nick Asher. Tentatively, it's a five-yard pickup, but again, a flag is down at the 39-yard line. That flag came out a little bit late. It was after Kanak appeared to throw the football. They are talking to North Tama, so this would indicate a penalty against Grundy Center, and it's a holding call against the Spartans. So the Spartans had the first down, but will get flagged for a 10-yard penalty. So they'll march it back to the 29-yard line. In essence, that becomes a 11-yard uh, penalty here for Grundy Center. So Grundy Center will get second down over, but now the Spartans are facing 
a second and 21 for their own 29 yard line. Twin receivers near side. One of the far side could not get a gun once again. He's got Opime in the backfield. They'll give it to uh, Opime. He'll run it to the near side. Right up the middle now as he'll change directions. He'll pick up uh, a few yards. He's inside the 30. Be tackled just shy of the 35-yard line. They'll give him forward progress to the 34. So it's another five-yard pickup here for Zach Opime. So Opime with two carries. Ten yards now on the evening. But it brings up third and long here for Grundy Center. Keep in mind, two of the top defenses in the state going at it here tonight. Grundy Center only allows 3.6 points a game. North Tama 3.8 on the season. But the edge offensively belongs to Grundy Center, at least in the statistical category. Logan Canock back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. Looks to the far side. Now he's going to keep the football. 35-40. And trips up at the 40. He's going to get forward progress to the 41-yard line. That's a 7-yard gain. But it's going to force a punting situation here for Grundy Center. So the Spartans went three and out on the opening drive of the uh, game. So it'll be Jensen Clapp in to punt the football now for Grundy Center. He'll stand back at his own 25-yard line. The return guys here for North Tama are uh, Take Payne and Gabe Capriva back deep. They're standing back at around their own 15-yard line. Here's the punt. Good punt there by uh, Grundy Center. That ball's going to hit at the 25-yard line and be downed right there. So that's where North Tamo will take over first out at 10. Don't forget our game being broadcast tonight, not only on 99.5 KDAO, but also online at KDAO.com. You can also hook up a link, a video link, head to GC Spartans via Twitter. Check out the... Uh, webcast of this game as well. They've got it hooked up to our audio feed here tonight at Spartan Stadium. One of three games in the network lines tonight. We'll tell you about the other ones here in just a moment. North Tama ready to go on his first possession of the evening facing a first and 10 from his own 25 yard line. Capriva under center now here for the Red Hawks. Man starts the motion at the far side. Barking out the signals. He'll pass right out of the gate. Throws it down the near sideline. It's going to be overthrown. Pass was intended out here for uh, Tate Payne. Good coverage provided there by uh, Dean Zankula of Grundy Center. So the first pass goes incomplete here for uh, the Red Hawks and it brings up second down. Not surprised, Tom McDermott, the veteran coach that he is, wants to get his quarterback as comfortable as possible in his first career start tonight. So tries to air it out. Now it's gonna be second down. They'll send twins to the far side, twins to the near side. Man is behind the line of scrimmage. That's Weber. He's flight to the right of the quarterback, Cabriva. That uh, handoff goes to Weber. He'll take a far side. Has to running him 30, 35. And it's going to be angled out of bounds. Just sign the 35. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 33-yard line. That is going to result in a gain of about eight. And it brings up third down and two. So third down and short yardage situation here for the Red Hawks. And Grundy Center's defense will be tested immediately right here on North Tama's first possession of the night. Twin receivers to the near side. Twins to the top of the formation now as Cabrivo barks out the signals. Weber flanked to his right. They'll fake the handoff. Cabrivo's going to keep it. He's got the first down. He's inside the 40. Breaks the tackle there. Inside the 45. Runs it out to midfield. Now into Grundy Center territory. He's going to be drug out of bounds at the 40-yard line. They'll mark him out at the 41, just side of the 40. That's a terrific run right there on the part of Capriva, and it's first and 10 here for Nortema. A 26-yard run for Gabe Capriva on his first carry of the night. Nortema picks up its first third down and its first first down of the night. The drive stays alive now as the Red Hawks get it into Grundy Center territory. First and 10, near hash mark, 41-yard line. Red Hawks break huddle. Come set to the line of scrimmage. They'll set it up in the eye. They've got a receiver in the flanker position, top of the formation now. Cabriva barks out the signals, gives it right back to Weber. Straight up the middle run now. Tries to cut to the outside, but a nice job there defensively by Grundy Center. As Wesley Willis comes up and makes the stop defensively. That's a gain of one. And that'll bring him second down and nine now for the Red Hawks. So the Red Hawks now will huddle up also tonight on KDAO.com. Andy Jennings has play-by-play -play coverage for you. 
between Collins Maxwell at Gladbrook Reinbeck. He's at the pit tonight in Gladbrook. There's a pass, it's intercepted, deflected, and picked up by the Spartans. That pass looked like it was intended for uh, Adam Griner here in the near side of the formation, but it is intercepted by Grundy Center, and there's the first turnover of the contest. It's at the 39-yard line. 29-yard line as well to mark it as Grundy Center gets the first turnover of the night. So Gabe Cabriva completed the pass, but to the uh, guy in the red jersey, it was deflected on the near side and then taken away by Grundy Center. So the Spartans have it first and 10 following the first turnover of the night. Grundy Center now has it. In its own territory, they'll send Twins to the near side. Twins to the top of the formation split. The man in the backfield now will split. That's Opheim, but they're going to call a flag in the backfield, and that likely is going to be delay of game. It came from the left side, from the offensive side of the field, and it is a delay of game call against Grundy Center. So the Spartans again with a penalty here on first down. So this is going to result now in a first and 15 as they'll mark the line of scrimmage back to the 24-yard line. Again, they'll send Twins to the top of the formation now with Hendricks and Clapp. Twins to the far side. Opheim shifts from behind the quarterback, Kanak to the far side. They'll fake the handoff. Kanak will keep it. He's inside the 30. That is going to be knocked down at about the 33-yard line. Nice job there by Logan Kanak. Good, hard run there by the uh, Spartans quarterback. He's got a good chunk of the yardage back. That's a 10-yard pickup, and that's going to bring up second down and five. So Kadak is second carry of the night. Gives Grundy Center some manageable situations right here. Kadak running the football this year has carried it 47 times for 326 yards, averaging 6.9 yards per carry coming into the game. He and Opheim are the primary rushers for Grundy Center. I set formation here for the Spartans. This time they'll give it to Opheim once again. Big hole there up the middle, but it's going to be plugged up right at the line of scrimmage. Opheim, though, gets a good run. He's going to be close to first down territory near the 39-yard line, and they'll stop here, I believe, for a measurement. The guys at the far side of the field running the chains thought he had the first down. They initially started to move the chains before the official signaled a first down, and now they officially do signal the first down. So Grundy Center keeps its drive alive here on its second possession of the night. They move it forward here to the 39-yard line. Also on KDAO.com tonight, streaming live video. Class 1A District 6 matchup, number 8, Iowa City, Regina. On the road at South Harden, Chuck Cupboarder tonight is in Eldora with uh, live streaming of that game on KDAO.com. Here's a keeper now by Logan Canock. Big run there and a tough hit there. Flag comes down at the last minute on the far side. Tackle made there by Adam Greiner. As uh, Kanak ran the football. He's got about three yards on the carry, but that flag came down where the tackle was made. And it looks like it's going to be against North Tama. So the three-yard pickup here by Opine will count. And it's going to be a personal foul call against the Red Hawks on the tackle. It's a 15-yard walk-off right there, and Grundy Center has its second first down of the night. So it's first and 10, North Tama into North Tama territory for the first time tonight. They'll spot the football at the far hash mark here at the 41-yard line. Man brings in the play from the near sideline. That's Logan Kanak. The play clock down to 13 seconds here for Grundy Center. Perfect weather for football tonight. 54 degrees, winds from the southeast at nine with mostly cloudy skies, although that cloud is starting to break up with the moon shining overhead. Here's a swing pass out to the near side. It's caught at the 40, 45, or 35, I should say, and then down to the 30 yard line. It is Matt Jansen on the receiving end of the pass. And for Grundy Center, that's going to be about a nine-yard gain to the 31-yard line. They may mark, they may stop this one for a measurement. The nose of the football sitting just in front of the 31-yard line hash mark. I'll tell you what, this, if the chains are right across the field, this would be a Grundy Center first down. They're not going to measure it. They're going to give it to Grundy Center. 
So the Spartans have their third first down of the night on a 10-yard pass completion there from Logan Canock to Matt Jensen. And the drive stays alive here for the Spartans. Opheim in the backfield. Twins each side of the formation now. Opheim shifts to the left to Canock. Back to pass is Canock. Airs it out over the middle. Ball is caught. Got a receiver 25 to the 20. 15-yard line. And out of bounds goes Gail Hendricks after that uh, pass completion. And it's first and 10 here once again as Gabe Cabriva makes the uh, stop and pushes Hendricks out of bounds. That's a 15-yard gain on Canuck's second completion of the night. This one caught by Hendricks. As Grundy Center now picks up its fourth first down of the evening here. And they've got it in the red zone for the first time here this evening. They'll send trip receivers to the far side now in Clapp, Hendricks, and Jansen. One to the near side now in Asher. Opheim ships to the right in the backfield. He'll take the handoff from Canuck. Drives to the left. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. Actually, they'll mark him down to the 6-yard line. And that'll be an 8-yard pickup right there for Zach Opheim. So, Opheim... Got the uh, carry, a tackle for North Tama made by Breck Hume, whose brother was the starting quarterback a year ago for North Tama. And now it's second down and two from the six yard line. Same formation here for Grundy Center, trips to the top, one to the bottom. Opine shifts to the backfield now, to the left of uh, Kadak. This time they run it right side, and right up the middle goes Opine, trying to stretch it to the end zone, but he's gonna be tackled just short. Did not get the touchdown, but will pick up the first down. So from the six-yard line, they're going to mark it at the one. So it's a five-yard gain here for Zach Opheim. The fifth first down of the night here for Grundy Center. This drive as well. And now Grundy Center facing first to goal from the one-yard line. Under center is Logan Kanak. He'll take the snap, hand it off down to Opine, takes it right side, touchdown Grundy Center. Virtually untouched to the right side of the line, he followed the block of uh, Kobe Muller and Wes Willis and takes it in from one yard out, Opine with his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Comes from one yard out, the score comes with 4.46 to go in this opening quarter. And now it is uh, Cale Hendricks on to attempt the point after try. He's uh, 15 of 19 this year in extra point tries. That kick is on the way. It is good. 4.46 to go, opening quarter. Ruddy Center scores on a second drive of the game. Spartan seven, North team and nothing. Back with more after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. 20 center set to kick off following the one yard touchdown run by Zach Opheim and Kale Hendricks extra point kick with 446 to go here in this opening quarter. Spartans with an early seven at the lead over their third ranked opponent for North Tama. Here's the approach and the kickoff now as uh, Kale Hendricks kicks it deep and is taken here on the near side line at the five to the 10. Runners cutting to the other side now to the 20 and is gonna be tackled inside the 25 yard line. On the return, it's Luke Pennell for North Tama. Nice return though for Pennell as he gets uh, North Tama in pretty good field position. Pennell, a six foot senior for North Tama. And the Red Hawks have it here on the near sideline. The football spot is just shy of the 28 yard line. The Red Hawks will have 
Call it first and 10 from the 27. Football not quite at the 28 yard line. They'll send Twins to the far side. Twins to the bottom of the formation out. Lone set back there is Noah Weber. Next to uh, Gabe Cabriva. Grundy Center showing blitz here on first down. They'll give it to Weber and a smothering defense and the tackle made right there, right at the point of handoff. Coming up to make the tackle there is uh, Austin Engelkiss. Engelkiss was right there and it'll be a one yard loss for Weber on that first down carry. So it brings up now, second down and 11 for North Tama. Two juggernaut football teams going head to head here tonight. Grundy Center, its most common opponent over the years has been Gladbrook or Gladbrook Rhineback, but for North Tama, Grundy Center, they played more games against North Tama than any other team in school history. A series that dates clear back to 1897. There's a, a strip sack. The football's loose on the uh, carpet and is picked up there by Grundy Center. The blitz taken there by Wesley Wells. Wesley Willis gets in there and forces the fumble. Cabrera could not hang on it. Grundy Center recovers the second turnover of the contest at the North Tama 18 yard line. So a big loss there for Cabrera. It's a 10 yard loss for Cabrera. As the second turnover of the contest here belongs to uh, Grundy Center. And the Spartans already have it in the red zone, leading it seven to nothing. Opheim, the lone setback. Trip receiver is top of the formation now as Opheim shifts to the left side of Canuck. He'll take the handoff, run it right up the middle, and will get forward progress inside the 15 yard line. That tackle made there by Thomas Hume once again. He makes this stop after a five yard gain there for Grundy Center. Opheim already with six carries tonight. 29 yards unofficially on the ground here for the Spartans. Kanak brings the play in from the near sideline. Clock showing 320 and counting in this opening corner and the Spartans lead at seven nothing. They took advantage of one turnover, trying to take advantage of a second one right here. Receiver out wide now is a clap for Grundy Center. They'll send trips to the near side of the formation in Asher, Jansen, and Hendricks. Kanak hands it off. Oh, he'll fake it there. He'll keep it himself. He's got it inside the 10. Stutter steps his way to the near sideline and it's finally going to be brought down here on the near sideline by Luke Pennell. Pennell making the tackle for uh, North Tama, but it's good for Grundy Center first down. So it went for the 14 yard line to the seven. So that'll be a seven yard pickup for Logan Kanak on his uh, fourth carry of the night. Grundy Center now with its sixth first down of the evening and the Spartans have it first and goal to go for the second time tonight. Lone receiver out wide is Clapp. They'll send Hendricks to the near side, set up Opheim directly behind Kanak. He'll switch down to the near side. He'll take the handoff from Kanak. Try to get it up the middle. He stopped initially right there and then got forward progress to about the four yard line. So that'll be a three yard gain here for uh, Grundy Center. One of the guys in on the stop was Breck Hume for North Tama. So it brings up now second down and goal from the four yard line, exactly two minutes to go. Drip receivers out wide. Asher's in the slot on the near side. Opheim, the lone setback, shifting to the right of Kanak. He'll take the handoff once again. Try to get it up the middle. Stretches forward and into the end zone for the touchdown. Second touchdown of the night. And this one comes from four yards out by Zach Opheim, his second score of the night, and Grunny Center extends his lead now to 13-0. Touchdown coming at the 142 mark of this opening quarter. Cale Hendricks in to attempt the point after try here once again, out of the hold of Dane Zinkula. Here's the snap, placement down, kick on the way, and that kick no good. That's well wide to the right-hand side. But Grundy Center has got a two-score lead with a minute 42 to go. Spartans 13, North Tama nothing. Red Hawks get the football. When we come back after this on 99.5, KDAO and online at KDAO.com.
needs, you can call 319-788-2000 for all of your automotive needs. Farmers Bean Supply in Rhinebeck is a proud supporter of Gladbrook Rhinebeck Sports. That's Farmers Bean Supply in Rhinebeck. When you're young, you've got the world at your feet. There's nothing standing between you and your future. Whether it's a gap year travel in the world or a career in business, you can't have the future you want if you're worried about finances. We have an array of financial balance to get you started on the right path. From checking your savings accounts to personal loans and everything in between. Because at GMB Bank, we Adam Hoy has the ball teed up here for Grundy Center. The 40-yard line set to kick it off following the second touchdown of the night by the Spartans. They lead it 13-0. The kickoff is taken at the 20-yard line there by North Tama. The return man is inside the 25 to the 30. Cuts to the far side of the field. Trying to get some room right there, but nothing doing as uh, Luke Pennell unable to get any more running room. Actually, it's Tate Payne with a return. And it's going to be first and 10 right there for the Red Hawks. They'll spot the football at the 33-yard uh, line. Our broadcast here this evening on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com brought to you part by Union Auto, by GNB Insurance, and by Marshalltown Community College. That went up from Spartan Stadium tonight. Fifth-ranked North Tama, a third-ranked North Tama, I should say, now with the football. They'll give it to Noel Weber here in the backfield. He'll take it to the far side, be tripped up right there. Little gain on the play. Was able to get forward progress inside the 35 to about the 36-yard line. That was a three-yard pickup right there by Noah Weber. So Weber, just his fourth scary of the night, will bring up now second down and seven here for the Red Hawks. They'll spot it at the far hash mark. A North Tama squad that has been... Pretty good offensively, but they've been in a couple of close ball games this year, most notably against Hudson and against uh, East Buchanan last week and also against Lisbon. Here's a handoff to Weber. He's stopped and dropped in the backfield. Nowhere for him to run. He's going to be tackled there at the 35-yard line. Couple of Grundy Center defenders were there on the run. Looked like he got back up to the 35-yard line, but they're going to mark him down at the 33, and Wes Willis gets credit for the tackle. A loss of three on the play. So nowhere that time for Luke Pennell was the ball carrier. No way for him to run. His first carry of the night. It brings up now a third down and 10. The first third and long situation North team has been in this evening. They've got trip receivers to the near side. One of the far inside now with Cabrera quarterback in the gut. He'll take the snap. Two-step drop. Looks over the middle of the field. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws. Incomplete. Nice quarterback pressure applied right there. The pass was intended on the near side for Noah Weber. Providing the quarterback pressure was uh, Kobe Moeller providing the quarterback pressure along with Austin Hiltenbrettle, Hiltenbrettle I should say. So Cabriva throws his second incomplete pass and it forces a fourth down situation now for North Tama. And the Red Hawks will take a timeout. timeout the timeout coming with 4.9 seconds to go here in this opening quarter. We'll keep it here since we're close to the quarter break. That is the first time out taken by North Tama this evening. Well, I mentioned this series between Grundy Center and North Tama started with an 8-0 victory by North Tama over Traer. Clear back in 1897. This is the uh, 74th meeting between these two teams. Grundy Center owns a 45-27-1 edge in this series. They've won three of the last four, having dropped last year's game at North Tama. A 5-4 and four campaign for the Spartans last year. North Tama went on to the playoffs, lost an overtime contest to Mason City Newman Catholic in the first round. The lone tie, by the way, in this series came in 1927. Here's the punt now by North Tama. It'll bounce at the 41-yard line and take it. North Tama bounce out of bounds at the 40, and that's the way this first quarter comes to an end. After one quarter of play, Grundy Center 13. North Tama nothing in front of a packed house here tonight at Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center. Back for the second quarter after this at 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com.
plus cars and trucks. All at competitive prices. Even if you just need help with the tires you already have, like tire repair, wheel alignments, and balancing, Bradbrook Tire Center is there for you. Stop by or give them a call. Bradbrook Tire Center at 322 2nd Street in Blackburn. Phone 641 473 3003. Bradbrook Tire Center is a small supply of the other. Oh, we're up and back at the Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center. Don't forget we're streaming this tonight on KDAO.com, audio and video. We have a link via GC Spartans Twitter that you can catch the live video feed of this game tonight here from Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center. Fifth ranked Spartans leading number three North Tama here. 13-0 as we're set to start the second quarter. A pair of touchdown runs from Zach Opine. One covering one yard, the other covering four yards. Both coming after North Tama turnovers. Grundy Center starts the second quarter with the football. First and 10, 40-yard line. Far hash mark. They're going to give it to uh, Opine. He's got some running room to the near side. Grounds his way inside the 45-yard line to the 48-yard line. That's a gain of about eight yards right there. And it's going to be second down to two here for Grundy Center. So Opine continues to work in like performance here tonight. As that football now sitting in the helmet of the Spartan logo between the hash marks close to midfield. Asher, the receiver, top of the formation. Down low, it's Jansen and Clapp. Lone setback here is Opine. They've got twin receivers out there. It's Hendricks now on the far side as well. They'll give it to... Uh, Opine, he'll fight his way up to midfield right at the 50-yard line, and that should be a Grundy Center first down. Had to get to the 50 for a first down. They're going to spot the nose of the football over the 50-yard line, barely to North Tampa territory, and it is indeed a first down for Grundy Center. Opine needed two. He got two. His 10th carry of the night, he's got 46 yards on those 10 carries. Grundy Center with his seventh first down of the evening here. Barely in the North Tama territory here at midfield. Twin receivers top and to the bottom. Kanak operates out of the gun. Back to pass here. Flushed out of the pocket. Runs to the near side of the field. Flag is up. And the pass is downfield intended for Jansen. Luke Pennell in the coverage. Pass was overthrown. Again, a flag though down in the Grundy Center backfield. And it's in the area of a hold. That's exactly the call coming up right here against the Spartans. That's the third penalty of the night here. Assessed to Grundy Center. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty. As they'll march it back to the 35-yard line. That, in essence, then becomes a 15-yard penalty. Because it's from the spot of the foul. So now it is first and 25 from the 35-yard line here for Grundy Center. They'll send Hendricks, the lone receiver, to the top of the formation. Asher in the slot on the far side. It is Jensen and clap down low. They'll fake the handoff here to Opine. Logan Kanak keeps it, trying to work his way out of the backfield. Gets forward progress inside the 35 to the 36-yard line. And a good tackle made right there by Dylan Hosek. And forward progress inside the 35 to the 36 yard line. So it's a one yard gain there for Logan Kanak. His fifth carry of the night. 28 yards total here this evening. 10 17 to go in this second quarter. A 13 0 lead by fifth ranked Grundy Center, leading third ranked North Tama. Twins to the top of the formation, twins to the bottom side now. Logan Kanak at the gun. Again, Kanak at the backfield. They'll fake the handoff to him. Kanak back to pass. Looks to the near side. Has a receiver. Ball caught. Asher's got it near midfield. Bulldogs his way. Back into North Tama territory. His drug out of bounds at the 47-yard line, and a penalty flight comes out right there. That's going to be a late hit out of bounds. Asher caught the pass at about the 49-yard line, got the first down, and then got collared out of bounds. 
I'm going to correct myself. It's not a first down. He got back to the initial line of scrimmage and just inside the mark. He had to get to the 40 for a first down, but this will result in a first down following the penalty. It goes as a 18-yard uh, pass completion here from Logan Canock to Nick Asher. Asher's first reception of the night. And then the late hit out of bounds will give Grundy Center an automatic first down. And that's the second 15-yard penalty whistled against the Red Hawks here tonight. So it's first and 10 Grundy Center now at the North Tama 30-yard line. Clap, Jansen, and Hendricks. Trip receivers, top of the formation. Asher in the slot on the bottom side. Again, it is Kadak in the gun. He'll take the football. It's a keeper all the way. Runs it to the near side. It's going to be tackled for a loss on the play. Nice defensive effort right there on the part of uh, Tate Payne. He blew up the play at the point of impact right there. And that's going to result in a uh, five or six yard loss by Grundy Center. There's a penalty on the play. A penalty on the play. So this is going to go as a six-yard loss. And then another penalty assessed to Grundy Center, a 10-yarder, after the loss on the play. So the 10-yard walk-off now against Grundy Center. Gives the Spartans first and 10 at the North Tama 47 yard line. Call it first and 27. Got a mile to go here to get the first down. They'll give it up by me. Trip to the backfield and goes down. Covering him immediately is Corey Eisenhower. He'll get credit for the uh, stop at least. And it's another two yard loss for Grundy Center. Opine losing his footing. Opine, that's his first negative carry of the night. And it came as a result of him losing traction there. They'll spot the football just inside the near hash mark at a second down and 28 now for the 48-yard line. Twin receivers to the top, twins to the bottom. Asher and Hendricks are the twins down low. Clap and Jensen, top of the formation. They'll fake the head off to Opine. Brutz is on. The pass is complete over the middle at the 30-yard line. And it's Hendricks that's going to get free. A flag is down on the play. Hendricks gets forward progress to the 15-yard line, and it's a potential first down here for Grundy Center. Again, a flag is down on the play. It's a 33-yard pickup. There are two flags on the play. There are two flags on the play. One is laying out there at the 26-yard uh, line. There was another one thrown at about the 15. So the officials have to sort out the yellow laundry on the field. We've got a face mask, the call against North Tama. And we have two face masks called against North Tama. Well, they only count one of those penalties, so it'll be a 33-yard penalty and then half the distance from there, which will result in about a five or six-yard walk-off right there. And it's going to be first and 10 for the nine yard line here for Grundy Center. Hendricks has his first completion, the six yard penalty against North Tama. And it's first and goal here for Grundy Center. Trying to extend a 13 nothing advantage right here. They've got the football first and goal for the nine. Hendricks, the lone receiver, top of the formation now. Here's Kanaka to center. Gives it to Opine. Straight up the middle run for Opine, but he's going to be stopped to drop just shy of the five yard line. Looked like he lost his footing there again on the run up the middle. He did find a hole, found a crease in there, and that's for a three-yard gain on the play. So it brings up second down and goal. They'll spot it at the six-yard line now. Crowd filled to capacity here at uh, Spartan Stadium tonight. Obviously with two rated teams going head to head, the top game in the area this evening. A lot of interest in this game statewide. Here's Kanak, takes the handoff, gets it to Opine, stop the drop, big tackle right there in the backfield. Johnny on the spot, Corey Eisenhower making the stop for the uh, Red Hawks. Enough to blow that play up for a loss of one. So Opine tackled back at the seven yard line. And now it's gonna be third down at goal. They'll spot the football at the seven here for Grundy Center. 
Spartans tonight in third down situations, one of one. They've got uh, twin receivers to the top, now three at the top with Asher in the slot here on the near side. Opheim flanked to the left of Canock, back to pass as Canock throws it to the end zone, it's gonna be incomplete. Intended for Asher, who was coming from the right side of the field to the far side, but Canock overthrows the target right there and it breaks up fourth down. They'll probably bring the field goal unit on. Hendricks has no tries, no attempts. So this will be the first attempt or try this year. It'll come out of the hold of Zane Dinkula. And it'll be a 24-yard field goal attempt as the spot is at the 14-yard line. Now he missed an extra point a few moments ago, but trying to add to the 13-0 lead. They're going to fake it. Zinkula rolls it out, throws the pass, is caught to Clapp. Clapp tries to stretch, but it's going to be short of the goal line and is tackled at the two. So it's a five-yard gain on the pass from Zinkula to Clapp, but the fake third down. Grundy Setter is able to convert. And the ball goes over on downs now to North Tama. Not a bad call to fake the field goal right there because now defensively, when you pitch three straight shutouts that allow just 18 points, you've got the Red Hawks pinned deep on your own end. Their backs are to the end zone right here. And they'll spot the football at the two yard line. Officials are having a conversation here. I think on the spot of the ball. Gives us time to remind you our broadcast tonight brought you apart by Hardin County Savings Bank, by Bears Bulldozing, Excavating, and Tiling, and also by Greenbelt Bank and Trust. Ellen Huffman from Spartan Stadium tonight. Red Hawks have the football now, first and 10 at their own two yard line, trailing 13 to nothing. Both Grundy Center touchdowns, the result of North Tama turnovers. They came on the second and third drives of the game for the Spartans, who were held a three and out on the opening drive, had the first down on the opening drive, but then a penalty kind of blew that up for Grundy Center. North Tama just mentioned it all right there for the Red Hawks. Both their drives have been stopped. They had some good success on the opening drive, got it into Grundy Center territory before an interception by Gabe Kariva. And then on their second drive, after Grundy Center went up 7-0, they fumbled the football on a sack attempt. This will be the third drive of the game now for North Tama. 7.35 to go here in the second quarter. Under center is Cabriva. Grundy Center is showing blitz. And it's going to be a run play. They'll give it to Luke Pedal. And get some separation outside that goal line. They'll mark it down to the seven. So that'll be, uh, actually they'll mark it at the six yard line. So it'll be a second down and six situation following a four yard game. But it gives North Sema some breathing room there with his back to the end zone. Gladbrook Rhinebeck at the end of one is leading Collins Maxwell 40 to nothing. That game is airing right now at KDAO.com. Rebels flexing some muscle tonight at the pit in Gladbrook. Grundy Center showing some blitz again. First and sixth call. Cabrillo will keep it himself. Flushed out of the pocket. It's going to be tackled from behind and brought down at the 10 yard line. Forward progress got him there. He was hit right at the six yard line. He was able to keep the feet moving. He'll pick up another four yards before Dean Zinkula brings him down. So Cabrillo with that four yard pickup now. Gives him 20 yards on three carries. But it's third down now for North Tama. Call it third and two from the Red Hawks' own 10-yard line. Twin receivers wide to the near side of the formation now. Michael Stryer is out there along with Luke Pennell. Pennell shifts to the other side, goes in motion. He'll take the hand off as the motion man. And it runs right into a grunty center defender on the far side of the field. Nowhere for Pennell to go. That play was pulled up behind the line of scrimmage. And no gain on the play for Pedal. It was Zach Opheim that made the stop defensively for Grundy Center. So Pedal gets held to nothing on the carry. 
and the Red Hawks are forced to put this one away. North Tima right now with only one first down tonight. The punt out of the end zone will bounce at the 43 yard line, take a North Tima roll to the 49 yard line. It did not cross the 50, so Grundy Center will take possession first and 10 at the North Tama 40 yard line. North Tama's Tom McDermott reached a milestone last week, becoming the latest Iowa coach to win 100 games. The Red Hawks have already won close games against district contenders Wapsie Valley and Hudson. So a loss tonight by the Red Hawks, in essence, wouldn't hurt them so much since they use the RPI system. They're undefeated. They've got the best half of their schedule ahead of them. Grundy Center, however, really in a precarious situation. They still have to play district contenders Hudson and Wapsie Valley coming up. So this would be a big win for Grundy Center if the Spartans can hold on and get it here tonight. Up 13-0 second quarter. North Tama with some work to do. Here's Logan Canock, the ball carrier. He'll run it out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And close to another late hit as Luke Pedal gives him a shove right on the sideline here. But the officials this time choose to keep the flags in their pocket. Probably a good call because that was in that gray area right there. Regardless, it's a five-yard pickup for uh, Logan Canock. And it brings up second and five now for Ready Center. They'll move the line of scrimmage to the near hash mark. Asher will be in the slot, top of the formation. Hendricks, the lone receiver, on the far sideline with Clapp and Jensen down low. Opine to the left of Kanak in the gun. They'll give it to Opine, big hole up the middle. 40, he'll stutter step to the 35, 30. Somebody's feet, takes a couple defenders with him and powers his way inside the 30 to the 25 yard line. Terrific run right there by Opine. A 20 yard gain for Zach Opine and his first and 10 now for Grundy Centers. The drive stays alive here for the Spartans. It was Mike Schreier coming up with a tackle there once again for North Tama. Grundy Center has just picked up his 10th first down of the evening. Thanks to that 20 yard run here by Zach Opine. Ball spotted just inside the near hash mark. Similar formation once again. Asher in the slot on the far side. Hendricks out wide. Twins down low and Jansen a clap. Opine to the right. Now to the left of Opheim, he'll, or to Kanak. Opheim will take the handoff and get forward progress to the 19-yard line. Tackle on the play there by uh, Tom Hume making the stop. And it'll be a six-yard pickup that time for Zach Opheim. Opheim, the workhorse tonight for Grady Center. He's only a junior. And Kanak only a sophomore. So there's some talented individuals here. They're the two primary offensive ground gainers for Grundy Center. They'll send one receiver, top of the formation, twins to the near side. They've got a new run in the backfield right here. There's Grundy Center, and the ball carriers can be stopped and dropped for a loss on the play. That ball carrier was Cole Lear. McLean makes the stop for North Tama. It'll go as a one yard loss for the Spartans. And it brings up now a third and five. Grundy Center's 0 and 2 in third down conversion tries tonight. They'll send Twins to the top of the formation in Jansen and Clapp. Hendricks down low. Lair is still in the backfield now. Shifts to the near side as uh, they're giving Opheim a break. Here's Kanak. Throws the quick pass. It's caught. Asher's got it. And he's inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. A 13-yard pickup. It's first and goal to go for Grundy Center. 13-yard pickup right there. Asher with his second completion of the night. Now with 31 yards on those two completions. Grundy Center has just converted his first third down of the night while picking up its 11th first down. And now a timeout, North Tama. Red Hawks, already down 13, nothing. Take the timeout with 2.59 to go. Grundy Center facing a first and 10. Make that a first and goal inside the 10 when we come back after this at 99.5. KDAO and online at KDAO.com.
I mentioned earlier, Grundy Center off to its best start in 31 years. The last time Grundy Center started 5-0 was back in 1988 under Coach Chuck Bredlow. The second of two state championship teams back-to-back -back for Bredlow in the Grundy Center squad. This is a Spartan squad that has not allowed a point now in 12 quarters. They pitched three consecutive shutouts after allowing just 18 points in the opening two ball games. During those three shutouts, the defense has not allowed more than 149 yards. Meanwhile, the Spartans are scoring an average of 32 points a game offensively. That's where the edge is for Grundy Center, and right now they're showing it tonight. Leading right now 13-0, North Tama coming out of its second time out of the evening. They'll send Clapp and Hendricks to receive top of the formation. Osher is in the slots here. Opine back in the game now. Part of the nice set formation for Grundy Center. They'll hand it off to Opine, but nowhere for him to go. He's going to be stopped and dropped in the backfield for a loss right there. Wow. Shooting the gap there was Ryan McLean for North Taba. Opine was dropped in the backfield for a loss of the play. It'll be just a loss of one for the Spartans. But a big play there. Defensively for North Tama. Not surprised. Two of the top three defenses in the state of Iowa coming into this game tonight. Grundy Center ranking sixth offensively in Class A. One reason they're up 13-0. They've taken advantage of two North Tama turnovers. It's been a stalemate since then. Trip receivers top of the formation. They'll fake the handoff. And Kanak had a path to the end zone but was tripped up. Trying to cut to the far side of the field, and it was Adam Greiner with a touchdown saving shoestring tackle right there on Logan Kanak. And Kanak lost a couple yards of the play. He was looking at Pater right there at the end zone in front of him until he was tripped up. So now it's third and goal for Grundy Center. The nine yard line. A whistle sounds, and this time Grundy Center will burn a timeout. This time out comes with a minute 48 to go in this uh, second quarter. Spartans leading 13-0 over North Tama, threatening, facing a third and nine from the nine-yard line. Back right after this at 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. I do not. I wish I did, but Nick does. Out, out, the courier's outside. Yeah, he's right outside the door. Yeah, went up and back here with you from Spartan Stadium and Grundy Center tonight. As uh, Spartans for their first time out of this first half, they've got some work to do. They've ran three straight plays and have. Uh, lost yardage after facing a first and goal from the six. They're now facing a third and goal from the nine. Opheim is on the field now as Grundy Center has it huddle up. They'll send Clapp and Jansen, the twin receivers out wide. It'll be Hendricks down low with Asher in the slot on the bottom of the formation. Opheim to the right of Kanak and North Tama jumps off sides. That'll be a half the distance penalty here coming up against the Red Hawks. So now from third and nine, it'll be third and four. So that'll be a five yard penalty here. Four and a half yard penalty officially. We'll call it third and five for mathematical sake. So now it's gonna be third and goal from the four yard line. Minute 48 to go, second quarter. Spartans trying to take a three score lead here over North Tama. Again, it's Clapp and Jansen top of the formation. Here's the handoff down to Opheim. He's tripped up in the backfield and nothing there again. Nice effort right there. This time it's Tom Hume making the stop for North Tama. And it'll be fourth and goal from the five. Opheim losing a yard on the play. 
So Grundy Center right now is one of four on third down conversion tries. And once again, they line up to kick a field goal. This one will come from 22 yards out. Something Grundy Center has not attempted this year. It's a low snap, and it blows off the uh, timing again. Zegula throws another incomplete pass. It was intended for uh, Jensen Clapp. So Grundy Center fails to convert once again. Their second missed field goal try, as they fake it actually, so it officially goes as an incomplete pass on the fake field goal attempts, and the ball goes over on downs with a minute seven to go in this first half. So North Tama trying to get something positive going here to close out this half. This is the area where I don't think they'll do a lot. With a sophomore quarterback making his first start, they'll play conservative right here and be fortunate to get to the half down 13 nothing. They'll run a play to the far side of the field though. Grundy Center had the running back stop near the goal line. Gets forward progress back to the line of scrimmage and maybe an extra yard on the play. That was Noah Weber, the ball carrier. And they do give him credit for a yard. So Weber. Able to give Grundy Center a second and nine situation right here. Line of scrimmage for a hash mark with Capriva under center. Takes the snap. Hands it off. Nowhere for the tailback to run. That's Weber, I believe, again. He does get a yard or two. Was able to twist his way forward. They're giving forward progress to the nine. So that's a two-yard pickup right there for Weber. And that will be the final play of this first half. Grundy Center has missed a couple of scoring chances, but they have scored twice. Got a good old-fashioned slobber knocker going on here tonight at Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center. The fifth-ranked Spartans lead it at halftime over number three North Tama. 13-0 is the score. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more from Spartan Stadium and Grundy Center. But first, a halftime report coming your way from Andy Jennings. That's on the way next year on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Southeast Bolt comes in at number seven. Ankeny is number eight. Number nine is Fort Dodge. 
And Waukee is number 10. In class 3A, Western Dubuque is number one. Solon is second. Cedar Rapids Xavier is third. Lewis Central is fourth. Dallas Center Grimes fifth. North Scott is sixth. Sergeant Bluff Luton is seventh. Washington is number eight. Independence is ninth. And Norwalk is tenth. In class 2A, Wacon is number one. Clear Lake is second. Algona is third. Columbus Catholic is fourth. Des Moines Christian is fifth. Green County is sixth. Benton is number seven. OABCIG is number eight. Crestwood is number nine. And Nevada makes their debut at number 10. In class 1A, West Sioux remains number one. Dyke New Hartford is second. Van Meter third. West Branch is fourth. West Lyon is fifth. South Central Calhoun is number six. Western Christian is seventh. Iowa City Regina is number eight. Mount Air is number nine. And Trainer is number 10. In class A, West Hancock is number one. St. Ansgar is second. North Tama is third. Westwood is fourth. Grundy Center is fifth. BGM is sixth. South O'Brien is seventh. MFO Armack is eighth. South Lynn is ninth. And Earlham is tenth. And an eight player football, Don Bosco is number one. Turkey Valley is second. Remsen St. Mary's is third. Coon Rapids Bayard is fourth. Audubon is fifth. Lennox is sixth. Easton Valley is seventh. Harris Lake Park is eighth. Newell Fonda is ninth. And Cam is ten. The first RPI rankings will be released on Monday. Being six weeks into the season, that means there's only a few weeks left and teams will be positioning to try and get into the playoffs. The first way a team can get into the playoffs is to win their district title, which automatically qualifies you. The other way is to get in via an at-large bid using the RPI. The RPI equals .375 times your winning percentage, plus .375 times your opponent's winning percentage, plus .25 times your opponent's opponent's winning percentage. New for 2019 this year on three-way ties for district championships. Only the team with the highest RPI will automatically qualify for the playoffs. The other two will have to get in via an at-large bid. Also, if two teams are side-by-side -side in the RPI rankings and they play during the season, the winner of that game would go. Now let's take a look ahead to tomorrow's high school sports schedule. There's going to be a high school cross-country meet. The South Harden Co-Ed will be held at the Pine Lake Country Club. It gets started at 9.30 in the morning. Some of the teams on hand include South Harden, BCLUW, East Marshall, GMT, North Tama, South Tama, Iowa Falls Old, and HEWSR. Coon Rapids Bayard and Webster City will round out the field. And there's all kinds of high school volleyball tournaments going on as well. Starting at 9 a.m., 2A number 6 Grundy Center is in the Waverly Shell Rock Tournament. Some of the teams in the tournament include 4A number 7 Waverly Shell Rock, 2A number 3 Beckman Catholic, and 3A number 10 Mount Vernon. Also, 3A number 1 Union is in that tournament. So it should be another good test for the Spartans. The full field is Beckman Catholic, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, Crestwood, Denver, Mason City, Mount Vernon, Nevada, Osage, Union, and Waverly Shell Rock. West Marshall's at the Madrid tournament. That gets started at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Here's what the field looks like. Ankeny Christian is in there, as well as Colfax Mingo, Collins Maxwell, Hampton Dumont Cal, Van Meter, Webster City, and West Marshall. South Tama is at the Charles City Tournament. That gets started at 9 a.m. And BCLUW is in the Columbus Catholic Tournament. That starts at 9 a.m. It's another big field. BCLUW, Don Bosco, Independence, Marion, North Bay Valley, Starmont, Sumner, Fredericksburg, Benton, Shellsburg, Waterloo East, Waterloo West, and Wonton will all be in that. Some of the rated teams include 4A number 9, Marion, and 1A number 13, BCLUW. It's a big weekend for college football as conference play is here. 14th rated Iowa at 4-0 and 1-0 in the Big Ten will go on the road at 19th rated Michigan who has 3-1 and 1-1. And
Uh, who, where are you going to broadcast that? The one we can uh, win. I'll say that. Oh, you do. Yeah, we got three different teams. We got three different teams. offense is scoring 32 and a half points per game. Sure. Passing for 240 yards and rushing for 217 yards. I used to do it. I used to do the special and then now when they've got all three up in the mind, I let them take care of it. One last one. Salmonson involved in that station? Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's our uh, he's also GM down there. Okay. Yeah. 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 I knew his mom and dad real well. Oh, yeah. I talked to his mother, but obviously, Bob's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Kayla Hendricks added the extra point kick to make it 7 0 Grundy Center. And then when North Tama got the football back next possession, Grundy Center on a blitzing sack of uh, Cape Capriva. He fumbled the football. Grundy Center recovered, had a short field to work with, had less than 20 yards to go in the second drive, and Opine punched it in on a four yard run with a minute 42 to go. The extra point kick went right, right and Grundy Center with a 13 0 lead after the opening quarter. Nobody has scored since then. Grundy Center, though, twice has driven it inside the red zone, both times uh, lined up for a field goal in fourth down. Both times they faked a field goal and ended up short. Even one of those field goals in this game could have been a little bit uh, more advantageous for Grundy Center. It already is, as far as statistics are concerned, Grundy Center right now unofficially with 188 yards of total offense while holding North Tama to just 35. And it's an even split between run and pass for Grundy Center. They've got 94 rushing yards, 94 uh, passing yards. Zach Opheim, the leading ball carrier on the ground. He's carried it 17 times for 70 yards. Has his two touchdown runs covering four and one yard. Passing the football, Logan Kanak is five of six, 89 yards. Dane Zinkula's got the other five yard pass for Grundy Center. And the receivers... Nick Asher has gone to two balls for 31. Matt Jansen has got one for 10. Kale Hendricks has got two passes for 48. And uh, Jensen Clapp has got one pass for five. Logan Canock running the football, by the way, has carried it eight times for 25 yards. North Tama's side of the ledger, Noah Weber has uh, rushed it to a total of uh, six times for 14 yards. Luke Pendle has carried it three times for just one. Gabe Cabriva right now is 0 for 2 in the passing department with an interception. Running the football, he's 3 for 20. So only 35 yards of running. Offense tonight for North Tama. Grundy Center's defense has been just stellar tonight, forcing the two turnovers. That's been the biggest difference in this ball game with Grundy Center up front. Here at halftime, leading North Tama on its home field, 13-0 at the break. We'll take a break. We'll come back for a second half coverage from a uh, filled up Spartan Stadium tonight in Grundy Center. Back right after this at 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Thirteen nothing. Our halftime score here tonight. Number five Grundy Center leading third ranked North Tama in clearly the top game of the area tonight. It is one of eight games across the state of Iowa involving uh, rated teams going head to head in all classes in Iowa, and this one has uh, had the top billing here in this area for quite a while. It's for the lead in Class A District Seven, and Grundy Center right now with a thirteen nothing edge. Other games going on. In the district tonight, BCLUW is on the road at Wapsie Valley. Comets looking for their first win. Wapsie Valley 3-2 on the year, 1-1 a district play. BCLUW is 0-2 in the district. East Buchanan is on the road at Green Mountain Garwin. Buccaneers are 2-3 following last week's loss to a North Tama. They're 0-2 in the district. Green Mountain Garwin looking for its first win. Wolverines are 0-5 and 0-3 respectively. Hudson is uh, on the road as well. That's a non-district game for the Pirates. They're 2-3 overall. 
They are on the road playing number two, St. Ansgar, which is undefeated. The Saints playing in Class A District 4. Hudson, of course, out of Class A uh, District 7. St. Ansgar is a solid number two across the board, ranked number two in Class A behind uh, West Hancock in the Associated Press, the Radio Iowa, and the uh, Cedar Rapids Gazette polls. One score we can give you, our halftime score for the Pitt and Gladbrook tonight, where Andy Jennings says that game streamed live at KDAO.com. It is uh, Gladbrook running back on top of Collins Maxwell at the half, 54 to nothing. That game was 40 nothing Rebels after three quarters of play. Our other uh, stream game tonight on KDAO.com is a Class 1A District 6 matchup. Eighth ranked Iowa City Regina, that's by the Radio Iowa poll, playing on the road at South Harden tonight. We'll also have playback of that game with Chuck Carpenter on their call tomorrow morning at 10 and Sunday evening at uh, 7 on KDAO TV 45. Grundy Center started the football game with the ball, so they'll kick it off here while the Spartans to start the second half. It is fielded back at the uh, nine-yard line here by North Tama. On the return, Luke Pedal has got it inside the 25-30, and it's going to be pushed out of bounds at the far side of the field there at about the 33-yard line. There was a flag on the play, thrown late on that far sideline. It's laying out there at the 32-yard line. So it came right at the end of the run where pedal was angled out of bounds. There's been a couple late hits out of bounds here tonight. And it looks like we're going to get another personal foul penalty against Grundy Center. So Grundy Center now with his fifth penalty tonight. 55 yards and penalty yardage by the Spartans. Grundy Center with 11 first downs. North Tama with just one this evening. A pair of turnovers for the Red Hawks. And North Tama's got it now first and 10 from its own 48-yard line following the penalty. Cabriva will hand it off. Up the middle run right there. They'll give it to uh, Luke Pennell. And Pennell's got some positive yardage into Grundy Center territory at the 49-yard line. So it's a three-yard pickup right there. And it brings up second down. Now keep in mind as this game goes along, if they need the services of uh, Zach Griner, right now he's playing the right end position. They could, in essence, change uniform numbers and put him in the backfield where he normally plays. Here's a nice run by Pendle coming to the other side. Pendle flag is down now as uh, Noah Weber, the ball carrier, I should say, cut down out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Right now, that's a 15-yard pickup, but the flag of the play laying there at the 46-yard line. It came right where uh, Weber made the cut to the near side of the formation. It's going to be holding call against North Tama, so that's going to negate most of the yardage. As it is, it will go as a four-yard pickup here for Noel Weber. And then a 10-yard penalty against the Red Hawks. That was one of the biggest concerns of this game coming in for uh, the Red Hawks and head coach Tom McDermott. The penalty yardage and the miscues last week despite the win. Back to pass, Cabriva flushed out of the pocket, will keep the football. 45 midfield and run out of bounds right here. And another flag comes in late. Well, he ran out of bounds, got away from Grundy Center in the play by Adam Hoy, but then Jesse Mackey came in the area there. Did they flag him for a late hit? So Capriva gets forward progress. Into Grundy Center territory. And the officials will sort this one out. Cabriva run out of bounds, by the way, at the 48-yard line. So the yardage will count. It's going to be an 8-yard pickup for Cabriva, but the penalty goes against North Tama. It's a 10-yard walk-off. So now the Red Hawks... Most of that gain yardage negated, facing a second and 21 from its own 37-yard line. 
Ball spotted now at the near hash mark here as uh, North Taman goes back to work. Cabriva with a quarterback draw play. Takes it right up the middle. 35 to the 40. He'll be smothered under right there by about three or four Grundy Center defenders. And another flag is down. Jesse Mackey and Logan Kanak in on the tackle. Cabriva with a six-yard gain on the play, but a flag comes down late. Again, there was about six defenders in on the tackle there for Grundy Center. They're talking to North Tama. Wonder if somebody got a face mask. Personal foul. And another 15 yard penalty and North Tama has just picked up its second first out of the night. So 15 yard penalty here, flagged against Grundy Center. At six penalties and 70 yards unofficially, Cabrillo will get credit for the six yard gain. That gives him 34 yards of five carries. Red Hawks back into Grundy Center territory now, facing a first and 10 for the 42. Now set the football between the hash marks. North team has just picked up its second first down of the night. Twin receivers to the top, twins to the bottom now. Cabrillo in the gun, hands it off to Weber. Weber's got some room, 40, 35. Will run forward, get forward progress to the 31-yard line. That's good for a first down there in North Tama, and that's an 11-yard gain for Noah Weber. So Weber coming up with the uh, first down yardage right there. Looked like Austin Angle King was in on the stop defensively there for the Spartans. So it's first and 10 now for the 31 yard line. Twin receivers each side of the formation. Cabriva takes the handoff. He'll fake it to Weber. He'll keep it to himself. He's got forward progress there to the 25 yard line. And finally, he's going to be tripped up and tackled. Jensen Clapp in on the stop there defensively for the Spartans. And that'll be an eight yard pickup now for Gabe Cabriva. And it brings up second down and short here for the Red Hawks. So it looks like they're trying to get Gabe Cabriva a little bit more involved in the offense here in the second half. Again, they'll send twin receivers top of the formation in uh, Adam Greiner and Luke Pennell. Twins at the bottom of the formation as well. Cabriva hands it off and nothing doing! Boy, they gave it to Weber. He was stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Grundy Center had that play red. Jesse Mackey makes a stop right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere for Weber to go, and he's tackled right at the 25-yard line. That'll bring up a third and four. So it's a two-yard loss for Weber on the play. And the Red Hawks now facing third and four from the Grundy Center 25-yard line. Twin receivers, top of the formation now. They'll send twins to the bottom of the formation. Weber's the lone tailback to the right of Capriva. In the gut, takes the uh, snap, rolls it to the far side. Looking, looking, angling to the far sideline. Got the first down, and has run out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 17-yard line. That lures about an eight-yard gain right there for Gabe Capriva. Another first down carry. That's his seventh carry, 50 yards for him. Red Hawks now with three first downs on this drive. They're fourth in the contest, and North Tame has also picked up its second third down conversion of the night. Now two of four in that category. Facing a first and 10 for the 17 yard line. Again, twins each out of the formation. Delayed handoff goes to Weber, and he stopped and dropped in the backfield. Oh, I'm on the initial hit. Coming up there also was Wes Willis. And nowhere for Willis to, or for a Weber to run. He's going to be sacked for a two-yard loss at the 20-yard line. That's the 10th carry of the night here for Weber. 25 yards. He came in averaging close to six yards a carry of 5.7. Has been limited to 2.5 tonight. That's a good defensive effort on the part of Grundy Center. North Tama, though, in the game. Down 13 nothing here, trying to get its offense going with a sophomore quarterback, Cabriva, now in the gun. One receiver each side of the set. Back to pass, Cabriva. Looking, looking, looking. Throws it over the middle. Ball is going to be deflected and knocked away. Another dangerous pass over the middle was intended for Luke Pennell. In coverage right there was Jensen Clapp, but it falls incomplete. It'll bring up third down. 
Cabrera threw a pass like that on the opening possession in the same area of the field, going the opposite direction back in the first quarter on a ball that was deflected and ultimately picked up by Grady Center and led to the first score of the game. On the next drive, North Tama fumbled. That led to Grundy Center's second touchdown. Since then, Grundy Center's driven it twice into the red zone, both times facing a fourth down fake field goals. Came up empty, turned it over on downs, and that's where we stand at 13 0. Trip receivers for the Red Hawks now, far side of the formation. Lone tail back is to the left side, low snap. Cabrera picks it up off the turf. Now running to the near side. Changes, goes to the far side, looks downfield, will keep it himself. Good decision there on Cabrera's part. And he'll be run out of bounds on the far sideline, but did he get the first down? Red Hawks say yes. Well, the line of scrimmage was at the 18. They're going to mark it at the 10. Just inside the 10 at about the 9-yard line. It'll be an 8-yard gain there for Cape Cabriva. And it's going to be fourth down and two yards to go here for the Red Hawks. Fourth down and two as they'll spot the football at the uh, nine yard line. And with that, Nortema will take a timeout, so we'll take one as well. 7.22 to go, third quarter. It's Grundy Center 13, Nortema nothing. Red Hawks are facing a second, make that a fourth to two. From the Grundy Center nine, back right after this on 99.5, KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Had a partial score tonight. Denver leading Apple to Parkersburg. That game was 7 0, first quarter. Cyclones on top. And again at halftime, Gladbrook Kreinbeck leading Collins Maxwell 54 to nothing. That game streaming live right now at KDAO.com. Also streaming live, South Harden hosting Iowa City Regina. Regals ranked number eight in the state by Radio Iowa. So fourth and two for the Red Hawks. They're going for it from the Grundy Center nine yard line. Trip receivers, bottom of the formation, one to the top of the far sideline. Here's a snap to Cabriva. They'll hand it off to Weber. He's got the first down. Nice tackle made right there by Wes Willis once again. That's the third or fourth tackle he's had tonight, but it's gonna be plenty for the first down as they spot the football at the seven yard line. So it'll be a gain of about three. They'll spot it at the seven. But a three yard gain. Here's Cabriva, fakes the handoff, runs near side, cuts the corner, angles his way to the end zone, but does not make it. Comes up just short. Tackle made right there by Adam Hoy. Touchdown saving stop will bring up second down and goal to go. This time from the two. That's a four yard gain on Cabriva's 10th carry of the night. He's averaging 6.5. Following the first down pickup on the fourth down conversion. Here comes Grundy, or North Tamey here once again now facing the second and goal for the Grundy Center two. I set formation now. Power eye attack lining up here for the Red Hawks. He'll give it to Weber. Powers his way straight ahead to the end zone. Touchdown. And North Tama, the first team to score on Grundy Center in 14 quarters. That streak ends right here with that touchdown. Three consecutive shutouts for the Spartans plus a first half of football. And North Tama is on the board at the 614 mark of this third quarter. The lineup for the extra point now as uh, Gabe Capriva will attempt the point after try. Seven of 13 on point after tries this year. The holder is uh, Devin McKinley. Here's the approach, the placement, the kick. It's good. 13-7. Red Hawks are on the board. 614 to go in the uh, third quarter. Friday Center will get the football when we return with more from Spartan Stadium after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com.
So I invite you to visit with our team as you make plans for next year. I will be in your stadium RDCSB.com. Come and grow with the lenders at HCSB. Member SCIC and Equal Housing Lender. Farmer Speed and Supply in Rhinebeck is your place to go for all of your automotive needs. They offer auto repair, tire repair, oil changes, a new line of tires, and make on-the-farm tire repairs. Farmer Speed and Supply in Rhinebeck is also a Napa-authorized heavy truck parts dealer. Farmer Speed and Supply is located at 405 Grundy Avenue, or you can call 319-788-2000 for all of your automotive needs. Farmer Speed and Supply in Rhinebeck is a proud supporter of Gladbrook Rhinebeck Sports. That's Farmer Speed and Supply in Rhinebeck. North Tama has the football teed up. Ryan McLean set to kick it off here for the Red Hawks. It's teed up at the 40-yard line. They'll kick it there in the direction of Adam Hoy. It'll take a North Tama roll. Picked up back at the 10-yard line now by uh, Grundy Center. The return man for the Spartans runs it back across the field just inside the 10. Did he fumble the football? North Tama says he did. Looks like the officials are going to call him down on the play. And on the return for Grundy Center was Matt Jansen. Not a fumble. They will him down, but the football is going to be set right at the 13-yard line. So number 13 returns it to the 13, and that's where Grundy Center now will begin its uh, first drive of the second half. So Grundy Center now facing a first and 10. Worst field position of the night right here for the Spartans. They'll hand it off. They'll give it to Zach Opime. It's just power football straight ahead. Opime inside the uh, 15. Gets forward progress to about the 17 yard line. That's a four yard run there for uh, Zach Opime, the junior tailback for Grundy Center and that brings up second down. Luke Pennell in on the stop defensively there for North Tama. 5.43 to go in this uh, third quarter. Red Hawks have just scored on their opening drive of the third quarter to cut the margin to 13-7. Grundy Center with the lead. Both scores coming in the first quarter set up by North Tama turnovers. Grundy Center now facing a second and six. All time in the backfield. Twins each side of the set. Could knock back to pass. Out of the gun. Airs it out deep. That ball's deeply overthrown. And it's going to be incomplete. Gabe Cabriva, the free safety, was the nearest guy to that pass at midfield. And for Logan Canock, that's his uh, second incomplete pass of the night. Canock right now is 5 of 7. Again, 89 yards passing. Grundy Center, even distribution of the football in the first half with 94 yards rushing, 94 yards passing, 188 yards total, while holding North Tama to just 35 total yards in their first half. But again, the Red Hawks consumed more than 35 yards on that opening drive to start the second half and took it to the house for the first touchdown of the game for North Tama. So for Grundy Center now, it is second and 17 for the six yard line. Here's Canock, he'll run the football and Canock almost broke it open. He's inside the 15 to the 17. There was a penalty by the way on that last play. That resulted in a five-yard walk-off, and Kanak is going to be just inside the 15. They'll mark him out at the 18-yard line. So, that's a 12-yard gain here for Logan Kanak. But it brings up a third and nine situation now. for Grundy Center. Back to pass, Logan Canock, but he'll keep the football. Big run up the middle, he's to the 35, breaks a tackle to the 45, to midfield, a run out of bounds. Canock faked the pass and picks up 32 yards to midfield. They'll give him credit for 31, they'll mark him just shy of midfield, and it's first and 10 for Grundy Center. A 29 yard run for Logan Canock on third down and long. That's the 12th first down of the night now for the Spartans. And Logan Canock with 66 yards rushing on 10 carries. Football is spotted right at midfield. Nose of the football placed right at the far hash mark. It is touching the 50 yard line. Four minutes to go here in this third quarter and the Spartans have it on their first drive of the second half. 
leading at 13-7. Twin trip receivers down to the near side as a Canuck is in the gun. Opheim to his right, he'll take the hand off, try to run it up the middle. Was stopped initially a yard shy of the line of scrimmage, but forward progress will net him a couple yards before he's finally knocked down. Looked like it was Luke Pennell, one of the guys in on the stop defensively there for North Tama, and they'll mark it for a, a three-yard gain. Make it a two-yard gain for Opheim. So it brings up second down and a short eight yards. Long seven, short eight. The football is spotted between the 47 and 48 yard line in North Tama territory. 3.15 to go in this third quarter. It is Jansen and Clapp, the twins to the near side. Opheim in the backfield. Hendricks, the lone receiver, far side. Fake handoff to Opheim. It's a keeper by Kanak. He's got forward progress to the 45 yard line. That's a three yard gain there. And now Grady Center facing a third and five. So Kanak, now with 69 yards rushing. Our broadcast here tonight on 99.5 KDAO, brought to you in part by Lons Plumbing and Heating and by Gladbrook Tire, along with Napa Farmers Feed and Supply in Rhinebeck. Third down and five for Grundy Center. North Tama 45 yard line. Trip receivers to the near side, one of the top. In the gun here is a Kanak movement along the line of scrimmages. And it looks like somebody on the left side of the Grundy center line flinched. That's going to be an off in a legal procedure penalty. In a legal procedure penalty against Grundy center. So that's eight penalties, 80 yards here for the Spartans. That will back it up to midfield. And now instead of Grundy center facing a third and more manageable five yards, they're facing third and a full 10 for midfield. 2.22 to go here in this third quarter. Capacity crowd here tonight. One of eight games involving head-to-head -head matchups of rated teams across the state of Iowa. This is the lone one in this area this evening. So a third and 10 call coming up here for Grundy Center. Got check time for the for the North Tama defense. Logan Canuck fakes the pass, runs it right up the middle and it's gonna be stopped and stopped at the 48. Only got a couple yards out of play. Boy, that hole was open there for a moment. But it closed up quickly, and it looked like it was a Dylan Hosack right there to close the hole and make the stop. Cannot gets credit for a one-yard gain. So 70 yards rushing on 12 carries. Runny center now, missing another third down opportunity. Spartans just two of six now in third down conversion tries and forced to put the football for the second time tonight. On to punt, Jensen Clapp. Averages 29 yards per punt. Blitz is on. Good, high, arcing punt there by Clapp. It's fielded at the 15-yard line by Nortema. The return man to the 20 and tackled right there. Wow! Down the field quickly right there was Grundy Center. Brandy, Braden Sawyer able to make that stop defensively. As Sawyer gets down there and makes a stop, it's only a five yard return for Luke Pennell. And North Tama will have it first and 10. They'll spot the football at its own 22 yard line. So a minute seven to go now in this third quarter. And North Tama starts its second drive of the second half, trailing 13 7. Twin receivers to the near side of the formation now. Michael Schreier is out there along with Luke Pennell. Twins at the top of the formation. Under center is Capriva. He'll hand it off. And the hole closes up the middle there for Weber. Weber trying to bounce it to the outside. Hit by Nick Asher and dropped down. As Sawyer again assisting on the tackle. Looked like Weber may have got back to the line of scrimmage. Now marking for about a half yard loss initially. Now put it right back at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play here for Noah Weber. 12 carries, 27 yards. He's got the two-yard touchdown drive for the Red Hawks. Their only score of the night coming on the opening possession of this third quarter. 13-7, clock showing 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Red Hawks have a huddle up. Coming out of the huddle now, it is uh, second and nine from the 23. Cabriva under center. 
empty as far as receivers are concerned, so they set it up as a running play. Now shift to a passing attack, and the pass is complete by Pedal, and he's going to be short of the first down. Gets forward progress to the 30-yard line on a seven-yard gain, and that'll be the final play of this third quarter. Caprivic completes his first pass of the night, and it goes to a Luke Pedal on a seven-yard completion. We play three quarters tonight here at Grundy Center. It's number five, Grundy Center leading third rank Nortema, 13-7. Redhawks have the football, third and two from the 30. They're on into the field when we return for the fourth quarter after this. So 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. We said all along coming into this game it would likely be a test of two of the best defenses in the state that certainly is holding true tonight. At a 13-7 game starting the fourth quarter Red Hawks trail by six with the football facing second, uh, third and two from the 30 yard line. Grundy Center showing blitz. Back to pass Cabrera. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws it. Floats it. It is intercepted. Picked off here at the 44 yard line. The pass was intended out here on the near side to Adam Greiner. And stepping in front of the pass is Dane Zinkulov. So the third turnover of the game here by North Tama comes on the opening play of this uh, fourth quarter. The last two turnovers by North Tama both set up Grundy Center touchdown drives. And the Spartans have it now, first and 10. Well, they're going to say that was an incomplete. Wow, so hold the phone here. It's going to force a punt situation. They say it was knocked away from here. It looked like it was an interception. So uh, North Tama drops back and quickly punts it, and it'll be down now at the 21 yard line. So that changed quickly. Wow. So take the turnover away, it becomes an intercepted pass. Nortema unable to convert, will punt it away. And so they opt to kick it away on fourth and two in their own territory. So now Grundy Center, instead of getting the football close to midfield, they will get a first and 10 at their own 21 yard line. Boy, Zinkula came close to forcing the third North Tama turnover. Clapp will be the receiver, top of the formation with uh, Hendricks down low. In the slot is Asher near side. Off balance eye here, or I should say lone setback now for Grundy Center. It's going to give it to Opheim. Opheim stopped initially. He hit his own guy who uh, looks to be a bit shaken up there in the backfield and then got forward progress back to the line of scrimmage and there'll be an injury timeout. So Opheim gets back to the 20 yard line. So that'll be a loss of one on the play. His 20th carry of the night gives him 75 yards rushing and we do have an injury timeout on the field now as a Grundy Center player is shaken up with 11.31 to go in this fourth quarter 13-7 Grundy Center back with more in the fourth quarter from Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com Services for duct cleaning, wells, plumbing, <coughs> and 
and geothermal. Call Lon's Plumbing and Heating of Rhinebeck at 319-345-2711. That's Lon's Plumbing and Heating of Rhinebeck. Now what up and back here at Spartans Team in Grundy Center, 13 to 7. Spartans leading North Tama here. If this game remains close, keep in mind the Red Hawks have been involved in a couple of close games this year. They knocked off Lisbon at Cornell College, 14 0. Then followed that with a 13 to 7 win over District Contender Wapsie Valley in the District Opener. Then went on the road and knocked off Hudson, 8 to 6. That's a Hudson team that lost its opener, 7 to 5 at home to Jessup. Injured Gunny Center, uh, Center player that was shaken up now is uh, on the uh, sideline. Helped off a little bit, but walked off mostly on his own power. On a second and 11 call, Kanak throws it, and a diving grab, it's caught! Nice effort right there by uh, Matt Jansen, coming up with a grab on a diving catch on a pass that was thrown short. And for the 20-yard line, pass is complete to the 27. That'll bring up third down and five. Following a six yard completion is where they'll mark it. Matt Jansen with his second reception of the night. So it is third and five here for Grundy Center. They'll spot the football at the 26 yard line. Spartans will send twins to the top of the formation. Now they'll line up trips out there. With Opheim in the backfield, is shifted to the near side. High snap, taken by Kanak. Follows the block of Opheim, trying to cut the corner. Gets it, cuts it out to the 25-yard line. And a flight falls as Kanak goes out of bounds. Run out of bounds right there by Noel Weber. Also by Dylan Hosack. But again, a flag is down. Now spot the football, it looks like, at the 30-yard line, which would be short of the first down. But where that flag is, it's going to be a Grundy Center penalty. So that will negate a potential fourth and short situation here. But it will give Grundy Center down over again. A flag is from the 30-yard line. so Or from the 20, I should say. And it'll be a 10-yard penalty back to the 10. So Canock... Losing six yards. And then the 10 yard walk off here in penalty yardage. That's 90 penalties, 90 yardage and penalties on nine flags. So it's first, or make that third and 21 for the 10 yard line now for Grundy Center. Kanak in the gun, Opine behind him. It is slapped to the near side, trips to the top of the formation. Hand off to Opine. He'll just go straight ahead. Hoping to maybe get a hole open there, but nice job again defensively for Grundy Center or for North Tama. Corey Eisenhower making the stop defensively there, and it goes as a three yard gain for Zach Opheim. On his 21st carry of the night, he's got 78 yards. Grundy Center again failing to convert on third down, forced to put the football away, and in his own end zone here is Jensen Clapp about two yards deep. Takes the kick, rushes on. That kick is straight into the air, and it's going to bounce and hit at the 35-yard line. It'll take a Grundy Center roll all the way upfield to the 48-yard line. So a fortuitous bounce there for Grundy Center. But North Tama will get the football in Grundy Center territory here at the 48-yard line, trailing 13-7 with 9.27 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Our broadcast tonight on 99.5, KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Brought to part by American Family Insurance Agent, Tony Niederhoff in Eldora, Iowa Falls and Grundy Center, and also by Wink Services along with GNB Bank. Ellen Huffman at Spartan Stadium tonight here in Grundy Center. First and 10 now for the Red Hawks. Trailing 13-7. Under center is Capriva. Twins in the backfield. They'll give it to Pedal. Pedal right up the middle. He's inside the 40 and to the 38-yard line. Potentially has the first down right here and a hard run right there by Luke Pedal. He will indeed get the first down on an 11-yard carry to the 36-yard line. So Pedal found some running room. His biggest run of the night right there going for 11 yards, giving the Red Hawks a first down. Their sixth of the night and their fifth of the second half. 
So it's first and 10 now at the 36 yard line, nine minutes to go. Under center is Gabe Capriva. Grundy center showing blitz. So they'll fake it to pedal. Capriva will keep it himself to follow the block on the far side by Weber. Nice effort right there by Capriva. He's got to forward progress inside the 30. Going to be knocked down there at about the 27 yard line. That'll be about a nine yard gain. It'll be second down and short now for the Red Hawks. So Capriva on his nine yard carry putting the Red Hawks in pretty good field position. That's the longest run of the night now for Capriva. He's got 11 carries and 74 yards at his second and one for the Grundy Center 27 yard line. 821 remaining in the contest. Here's the handoff. That is a first down for North Tama. No problem that time for the Red Hawks as they just play power football right up the middle. But the 27 yard line to the uh, 22. That it looked like it was Weber again pounding the rock on a four yard run. First down and 10 here for the Red Hawks as they approach the Grundy Center red zone with 7.50 to go. Boy, that extra point could loom big for Grundy Center here that they missed earlier. Here's the drive by Capriva, cuts it to the outside and is pushed out of bounds right there by Cale Hendricks. Capriva getting forward progress for the 22. They'll mark the football at the 16. So about a seven yard gain here by Cabe Cabriva. Brings up Second down and four from the 16 yard line. Twin receivers, he's out of the formation now. Here's Cabriva, hand off late, goes to Weber, fights the running room up the middle, and it's gonna be tackled inside the 10 at about the eight yard line. Logan Canuck makes the stop right there. That's an eight yard gain and another North Taylor first down. So Weber puts North Taylor in a first and goal situation, the eighth first down of the evening for the Red Hawks. Trailing 13-7, North Tama trying to punch it in right here. Twin receivers top of the formation, twins down low. Kareva in the gut, hands it, fakes it to Weber, takes it himself, up the middle, but he's gonna be stopped right there. Was hit initially by one Grundy Center defender in Joshua, or correction, Kobe Muller, and then Cleaning up the tackle was Jansen Klepp. It'll be a gain to the seven yard line. So one yard pickup there by Gabe Cabriva. The sophomore quarterback making his first start in place of Skyler Stacker. So it is second down at goal. Now from the six yard line for the Red Hawks. Under center Cabriva. And it's a high snap! They did a direct snap to the running back and it's gonna be recovered off the snap by Jensen. Oh my! They tried the direct snap, a little bit of miscommunication at the line. It looked like a direct snap attempt was gonna go to Luke Pedal, but the high snap recovered on the play. Jensen Clapp recovers it for Grundy Center on the third North Team of turnover of the night. This time, no doubt about it. All the way back to the 25 yard line. A big mistake right there for the Red Hawks when they were trying to punch it in. They had it at the six and lose 19 yards to the 25. Oh my. So that will go against Pendle's yardage. And Grunny Center now takes over following the third Red Hawk turnover. First and 10 Grundy Center at the 25 yard line. Here's the handoff. Nowhere though for uh, Opheim to go. He's gonna be tackled right there at the 25 yard line for no gain. Brings up second down at 10. So Opheim stuck on his uh, 22nd carry of the night for nothing gain, nothing lost. Football spotted just inside the 25. So about a half yard gain there for uh, Opheim. And the clock now becomes the biggest factor in this game. Grundy Center will try to milk as much time off the clock as possible if they can't score in this drive. Meanwhile, 
Nortema would like to get it back with as much time as possible to try to win the contest, trailing 13-7. Spartans right now with the football facing second and ten. Fake the handoff here to Opime. Kanako keeping himself. Trying to run a far side, but a swarmed under by three defenders there for North Tama. Nowhere for Kanak to run. He's tackled for no gain on the play. And it's third and ten. So the Red Hawks on consecutive plays have stopped running center for no gain. Following the Red Hawks' third turnover of the night. That'll bring up a third and nine. They do give him a half yard carry to the 20 six yard line play clock with 19 seconds to go game clock approaching five minutes and counting here in this fourth quarter Spartans nursing that six point edge they'll send twin receivers top of the formation a man in the slot on the far side and Kale Hendricks the lone receiver down low Opheim in the backfield out of the gun they'll fake the handoff to him Kadok rolls it out near side gets past the defender flag is down pass is up and deflected incomplete pass was intended out there for Jansen Clapp it was broken up by Gabe Capriva, defending on the play, but again, a flag is down in the Grundy Center backfield. Right where Kanak had made the cut around the defender, that's a holding call coming up against the Spartans. I would think North Tama would decline this. They will indeed. It'll mean a punting situation now for Grundy Center, and the Red Hawks will get the football. Barring no mistakes here, North Tama will take possession after the Grundy Center punt with 4.42 to go. And the punt team coming in late now with 20 seconds on the play clock to go. We do want to thank um, Grundy Center High School for allowing the, us to uh, video stream tonight's game. Grundy Center or GC Spartan at Twitter providing our video coverage tonight. Here's the punt. Low snap. Nice kick there by Jansen Clapp. It'll be fielded at the 42-yard line. And oh my, Mackey had him. The return man back there at uh, the 42, he let him up. But it was enough that nowhere for North Tama to get away. And Tate Payne was dropped to the far side of the field at the 42-yard line. And that is where the Red Hawks will start this drive of the contest. 4.29 to go. Third-ranked North Tama trailing fifth-ranked Grundy Center 13-7 to here tonight at Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center. Trying to win their second in a row against the Spartans after stopping their three-game winning streak with a win last year in Traer. Twin receivers each side of the formation. Grundy Center showing blitz. There's the handoff. A broken coverage there at the line of scrimmage. And the return man is Weber. He's got it. 45-40. Breaks it down the near sideline. Cuts back to the inside. And is finally going to be tripped up inside the 20. They're going to mark him out of the 25-yard line. But it's first down and 10 here for North Tama. It's a 33-yard run for Noah Weber. And a first down for the Red Hawks. The ninth first down of the night here for North Tama. Grundy Center showed blitz and it opened a hole at the line of scrimmage that Weber ran through and then some. Boy, this crowd really getting into this game now tonight here. 13 to 7. North Tama on the drive. The handoff back to Weber once again. A short ISO play right up the middle. Inside the 25. The dive play gets forward progress here to the 24. So it'll go as a one yard gain for Noah Weber on the pickup. That'll bring up a second down and two or one. Looks like it's spotted closer to the 24 yard line. So we'll call it second down and one. Twins each side of the formation here. Grundy center defense trying to come alive right here. Here's the snap to Capriva. He'll run it far side, be pursued right there, and then dropped. Gets forward progress to the 20-yard line. Clapp leading the charge there defensively for Grundy Center. A couple other guys in there in the stop as well, but it's going to be a, a four-yard gain. It brings up third and five now for Nortema. They've got it here at the 20-yard line. Grundy Center territory trailing by a 13-7 margin. Field goal in this situation does North Tama no good. They had it down here a few minutes ago and botched a snap that led to a turnover and then they held Grundy Center to three and out. Now facing a third and five at the 20 yard line. 
Under center is Capriva. Grundy center again showing blitz. The handoff goes to Weber. He was stopped initially, but then got free. He'll be cut down short of the first down. Grundy center able to make the stop after about a four yard gain. It'll be fourth and one now for the Red Hawks. Noah Weber carries a football right there on a third down situation. And it's fourth down and a long two here for the Red Hawks with 2.34 to go. From the 17 yard line and North Tama trailing 13 to seven. The lead in Class A District 7 on the line in this tonight in this battle of unbeaten from Spartan Stadium. Cabriva up under center in the ice set formation. Spartans again showing blitz, trying to crowd the line of scrimmage. They give it to Weber. He dropped the football. He recovers it, but Grundy Center holds. Oh my. Hit initially. Grundy Center was showing blitz and like a brick wall. Nowhere for Weber to go. He turned his back to the uh, line of scrimmage, dropped the football in the broadcast. Did recover, but gets nothing on the play, and the ball goes over on grounds back to Grundy Center. So twice, North Tama drives it into the red zone here in the final five and a half minutes of play, but come up empty. So now, Grundy Center gets the football, and they'll see if they get a time consuming drive, but the play clock down to three seconds to go. Grundy Center. Just gets it off with a second to go. They'll give it now to uh, Opie. Stutters his way. Breaks a couple tackles. Powers his way inside the 20. Gets forward progress to the 25-yard line. Not sure how he got out of the coverage right there. He was stopped for a loss behind the line of scrimmage, but managed to pick up about seven yards. It broke about four tackles on the way to that seven-yard carry. Good hard running there by Zach Opie. His 23rd carry of the night and showing no signs of fatigue with 85 yards rushing. A minute 38 to go. Keep in mind, North Tame has got two timeouts remaining here in this contest, trailing 13-7. Grundy Center has twin receivers. He's out of the formation right now. Opheim shifts to the near side. Back is uh, Kanak. This will be a handoff once again. They'll give it to Opheim. Opheim gets straight ahead. has got the first down, but a penalty flag is down at the Grundy Center backfield. Opheim got forward progress to uh, the first down stick. He needed four and got four, but the flag went down to the Grundy Center backfield, and this was likely coming back. Well, Grundy Center crowd doesn't like it. Certainly, North Tama crowd likes it. It does two things. It puts North Tama now closer to their end zone if they can force a turnover, but it also took time off the clock for Grundy Center. So, Depending on which way you look at that, it's advantageous for both teams. So the 10 yard penalty, it's 100 yards in penalty unofficially for Grundy Center tonight. Something they'll have to clean up going forward. Clock showing a minute, 18 to go. And Grundy Center now facing a second and 16 from its own 13 yard line. A first down would be vital for Grundy Center. So it's a big defensive series coming up here for Nortema. Spartans still trying to figure out what they want to do here. The clock has not started yet. Now they signal play in. So Grundy Center will take his time to get a playoff. They'll send twin receivers to the top of the formation with Jensen and Clapp, the twins bottom of the formation. Opheim in the backfield right now is Kanak now in the gun. He'll take the snap, cut it out to the near side, juke one defender, and then run it and be tackled at about the 12 yard line. And that's going to bring up a timeout now by Nortema. So the Red Hawks will take a timeout. Football will be spotted at the 12 yard line. So that's actually a loss on the play of a couple yards there by Logan Kanak. And with the North Tama timeout, that will leave the Red Hawks with one remaining, but it's a vital timeout with a minute 10 to go. Grundy Center facing a third and long from its own 12-yard line. We'll take a break. Back with more from Spartan Stadium after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Logan Kanak takes the handoff coming out of the uh, North Tama timeout. Nowhere for Kanak to go as he ran to the far side of the field. Got nothing on the play. Was stood up and dropped immediately for no gain. So that brings up a fourth down situation now for uh, Grundy Center. And it's punt time for the Spartans. Who are now just one of nine on third down conversion tries. And talk about a premier game right here. North Tama twice has gotten the ball into the Grundy Center red zone. With under five and a half minutes to go. And twice came up empty. First time they fumbled the football at a bad snap. The second time stopped at a fourth and two. When Grundy Center's defense held, it forced a fumble that North Tama did recover behind the line of scrimmage. And now Grundy Center in a punt formation or punt situation facing a fourth and 14 from its own 15 yard line with 64 seconds left. Spartans lead it by six, but North Tama about to get the football and the Red Hawks have just burnt their final time out of the night. So on opponent now will be Jensen Clapp. He'll be standing at his own goal line. The deep man on the return is Tate Payne standing at midfield. Luke Pendle coming back to join him right here as they make forward progress now up to the 45 yard line. And they've thrown a flag on Grundy Center it looks like for uh, a penalty. A five yard walk off here for Grundy Center. Well, that moves it back to the nine yard line. It will force the punt from the Grundy Center end zone. Here's the punt. And it's gonna be fielded at the 40 yard line right there by Luke Pennell. He'll just dive forward. And the Red Hawks have it first and 10 at the Grundy Center 40 yard line with 57.7 seconds to go. Boy, you talk about two teams. This game has matched all the hype it's had all week. In this Class A District 7 matchup, it's coming down to crunch time here with just under a minute to go. Red Hawks out of timeout facing a first and 10 for the Grundy Center 40 yard line. They break huddle, come to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers top of the formation, one down low. Another man cuts to the far side of the formation right now. So there's strip receivers on the far side. Gabe Cabriva, the sophomore quarterback, taking the snap out of the gun. Another receiver joins him. Cabriva runs it straight up the middle. He's got forward progress inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. And it'll be a quick step offense right here after a gain of six on the play by Gabe Cabriva. So a second down four situation now as the Red Hawks quickly switch to the no huddle. Back to pass, Cabriva flips the ball. Now we'll pass, Noah Webb has got the uh, inside the 30, 25 to the 20, and a stubby drop down inside the 20 at about the 17 yard line. A 17 yard pass completion there by Gabe Cabriva, only a second completion of the night. This one goes to Weber, and it's first and 10 now for the Red Hawks, their 10th of the game, their 9th of the second half. Cabriva takes the snap, rolls to the far side, gets past the Grundy Center defender, throws the end zone, in the hands of the uh, North Tama receiver, Michael Schreier, he cannot hang on. On the run there was Cabriva, he had Schreier in the end zone, but the pass falls incomplete. It brings up second and 10 now for the Red Hawks at the 14 yard line. It does stop the clock though for North Tama, so it gives the Red Hawks time to huddle up off the incomplete pass. 18.3 seconds to go. Red Hawks trail by three at a timeout, Grundy Center. Timeout. Spartans will take the timeout, leading at 13-7. 18.7 seconds to go as the Spartans try to defend their home field tonight against the Red Hawks. Back right after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. <laughs> Grundy Center has won its games this year by an average of 32 points. 
North Tama has won its contest by an average of 20.8, nearly 21 a game, but one of those was a 61 to nothing win in the season opener. The Red Hawks have played two tight ball games and that may be advantageous for them here in this close game tonight from uh, Gretty Center. 18.3 seconds to go. Second and a 10 for the 14 yard line. Back to pass, Cabrera looks to the end zone. Got a receiver there. Ball is uh, gonna be caught for the touchdown in the back corner of the end zone. The Red Hawks with the touchdown with 11.7 seconds to go. Have scored the touchdown. We'll have to get a uh, check on the number of the receiver in the far corner of the end zone. And now the all important extra point coming up here for North Tama. The game tied at 13 all, 11.7 seconds remaining in the contest. On to attempt the point after try is a Capriva. There's the snap, it's a low kick on the way, and it's good. Wow. 11.7 seconds to go. 14-13, North Tama with the lead. Back for the final moments of this ball game right after this at 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. Noah Weber catching the pass in the back quarter of the end zone, a 14-yard pass from Gabe Capriva, the first touchdown pass of his career, and this is his first career start. It comes with 11.7 seconds to go and gives the Red Hawks a 14-13 advantage. Grundy Center has scored both touchdowns off North Tama turnovers back in the first quarter. Now the kickoff here for the Red Hawks, and it's a squib kick that'll be fielded here, close to midfield by Braden Sawyer. So it'll be a short field position now for uh, Grundy Center. And with two stellar defenses as these are, both coaches feel confident. And especially Tom Dermott, Tom McDermott is putting these, this game in the hands of his defense. Grundy Center, keep in mind, has uh, two timeouts remaining and 10.9 seconds left. They need to get it into field goal range and Grundy Center has not attempted a field goal yet this year. Trip receivers far side of the formation now. Logan Canock in the gun. They got a man in the slot as well. Back to pass, Canuck. Rolls it out. Flushed out of the pocket. Keeps the football. Takes it forward. Inside the 50. Angles to the sideline. Run out of bounds at the 41 now with three seconds to go. So it's a gain of 13 yards by Logan Canuck on that final run. And a first down situation now for Grundy Center. The football spotted at the 42-yard line with three seconds remaining. And barring a penalty, maybe the final play of the game coming up right here for the Spartans. They've got the football now with trip receivers on the far side. Kanak in the gun, back to pass. Still looking, he's gonna throw it deep downfield toward the end zone, up for grabs, it's deflected, and it is incomplete. It was nearly caught off the deflection there by Matt Jansen, but he comes up short and Nortema comes on the road and gets another close win here tonight. They knock off Grundy 14 to 13. The early mistakes nearly cost Nortema, but they get through a week of adversity and come on the road and get a big win here in this top five showdown on the road at Grundy Center. The 74th meeting between these two squads and it did not disappoint 14-13, the final score tonight. North Tama survives and stays unbeaten, handing Grundy Center its first loss of the season. 
We'll take a break. We'll come back and uh, have more from Spartan Stadium in Grundy Center right after this on 99.5 KDAO and online at KDAO.com. I've got it for 105. 